Welcome to my smithy. Daniel Alexander McIntosh is my name, but most just call me Old Dan. I arrived in the southern land in 1861 on board the ship Robert Henderson. I had left my family home in Port Mahogmac in the highlands of Scotland. I am from a seafaring family. My dad drowned when I was only two and I had a hard upbringing with my stepfather. I wanted to be a sailor but my mother made me learn the blacksmith trade. Hearing of the gold in Otago, I set sail for a better life abroad. Arriving in Pochamas, I soon had a mind to go to the gold rush in Ballarat. I caught a ship bound for Australia, but I had no success prospecting there. So I returned to Otago and headed to the Dunstan and Tuapika goldfields. Again, I had no great success, but made a living making and repairing the miners' tools. The little gold I did find, I had made into my wedding ring. In 1864, I went to live by the sea again and set up a blacksmith shop in the then flourishing town of Port Molyneux. There I met my wife, Mary Maclay, and we were married a year later. We made a comfortable house and started a family. I called my firstborn Daniel. That's him on my left, and James, and little Andrew is on my knee. In 1866, I bought a 50-acre block of bush-covered land at Otokura, paying the price of £2 an acre. For several years, I would walk the six miles back inland to work at clearing the land and building a new home in the smithy. I planted a colourful garden, orchard and sheltered trees. I used to love spending time in my garden. We called the property Long Acre. I continued to walk to the port and over the hill to Awaka at least once a week. I had no hack, so I walked everywhere. Once I walked six miles with a beehive on my back. My smithy was always a hive of activity and served as a great meeting place for the district. We constantly exchanged local news, such as the progress of the latest bushfires, the new settlers and the railway going through the bush. Sometimes I would treat men so backs We'd have to lie face down on the ground between two planks and I would walk up and down on their backs. Life was busy with the ten children, but the times were mostly full of fun and laughter. Our home was warmly open to everyone who called, whether it be a farmer waiting on implements to be repaired, a travelling swagger, or a preacher or missionary. Me and the boys would regularly shoe huge draft horses, make cartwheels, hinges or implements. In the earliest days, we made nails for building and the first bad wire in the district. We were always full of fresh ideas and loved helping farmers get some innovation to help make their lives more comfortable. As I grew older, my sons Dan and George took over the running of the smithy. In 1913, Mary, my wife of 48 years, died of cancer. Mary always had a beautiful soft voice and kindly ways. We all loved her dearly. Daniel Alexander McIntosh passed away a year after his beloved wife Mary. Longacre is today still owned by some of the Maclay family descendants. Daniel and Mary's many descendants are scattered like feathers across the earth. Predictably, a high proportion of their descendants have subsequently been involved in some form of clever handiwork, engineering and or construction work. <laughs>